Today, dear viewers, you get Unhinged Cast, along with Unhinged Game Master, with an Unhinged Game of Witcher. Welcome to Ways of Old. Uh, shit's, shit's, shit's doing things. Um, I don't have any announcements aside from welcome, and we're glad to see you back for episode two. Um, so I have no reason to delay in introducing our cast, so let's go ahead and meet them, shall we? Ah, hi, um, I'm Luna. Orgered by night, I stream on Twitch and make stupid TikToks. You can find both of those things at Druid by Night. Um, I think that's all I have. I'm playing Cersei. She's a, she's a mage. Off to a great start. I'm done. Yes, 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 yes. Hello, I am the Azure Butterfly, or Azure for short. I'm a fae butterfly on the internet, and you can find me at the Azure Butter One in most places, but here on Twitch, the Azure Butterfly. <laughs> um, I am playing Ingrid of Sintra, a bear witcher. Hey, what's up? Um, I'm Edge, uh, a.k.a. Nyoka. Um, I am a witcher from the School of the Viper. Uh, overall badass. That's me. Well said, well said. Uh, as we can see, everyone seems to have dressed in character. I, me, I, I wear the same thing every day because I'm a cartoon character. Um, <laughs> a figment of your imagination, if you will. Uh, An anime protagonist. But, uh, something. <laughs> <laughs> the unfortunate Cabbage Man in the Avatar story. <laughs> um, but uh, thank you guys for, for having us. You've met our cast. We have, uh, we've already established this is going to be a very unhinged scattered episode so let's jump right into it with episode two of ways of old a brief recap of what has gone on so far <clears throat> uh normally i would assign this to a uh, a player however i don't feel it's right to spring it on anyone because we haven't established who that's gonna be uh so you guys get to go through my goldfish brain of my recap so enjoy um of what has happened so far sarcy ingrid and yoka have arrived in the zima uh, either having uh, begun their life and begun their, their own business there, or having just journeyed here based off of a hunt and, and descriptions of uh, work, essentially. Uh, after arriving, they uncovered uh, together, after meeting up and establishing their mm, tentative relationships with one another, uh, uncovered a, a Nilfgaardian plot to unseat certain lords and nobles that weren't uh, going to push Nilfgaardian interests. <clears throat> they found these Nilfgaardian spies in a rundown opera house, to which they quickly dispatched two of the three. Uh, they kept one of them for questioning and for uh, interrogation purposes, uh, to which the individual was quite open about their about their plot uh, for fear of Nilfgaard uh, essentially killing them no matter what. So what's the point of keeping your lips sealed? Um Cersei and Yoka went to fetch the, uh, I almost said Alderman, it is the Burgermeister, um, to inform him that the uh, threat had been dealt with, that his daughter was safe, uh, and that there was a prisoner to be kept by the guards. Uh, while they were away, Ingrid and this individual exchanged some words, some harsh words, and we learned a little bit about Ingrid's mm, backstory a bit. Uh, Ingrid is, of course, tied to Sintra and seems to have some regrets with the unfortunate fall of the kingdom of Sintra, to which the uh, spy pressed quite heavily. Uh, a lot of taunting, a lot of violence ensued. There was some um, aggressive interrogation, and by aggressive we mean uh, this dude got the shit kicked out of him. Um, well deserved. Uh, but after that... The three of you reunited along with the Burgermeister and <clears throat> set out uh, about making a contract for the creature that the Nilfgaardian spies were in fear of. For there is still a monster on the loose, and these three have taken up a contract by the Burgermeister to find it, hunt it, kill it, or perhaps save it in one of their, one of their eyes, depending on what it may be. However, our heroes... Uh, upon some uh, some investigation, some hunting skills of their own, found a cave, found out where this creature might be. We, they know that it is vampiric in nature. They uh, went to, into this cave, 
fully ready for combat, fully ready for a hunt to ensue. And they indeed found something dead pinned to the wall. A Garcane, a vampiric creature that had already seen combat and was already slain. However, this was not the only thing in the cave. A living Garcane made its appearance shortly after, and that is where we left off directly before combat with our trio of heroes. So now, we begin right where we left off in this cave and with this Garcane. The three of you are about to enter combat, and in this case, I need initiative. This will be a 1d10 plus your reflex. My dice just went everywhere. Hell yeah. Ooh. Let me actually open my character sheet. <laughs> 14. 18. Uh, 18. <laughs> You're muted. But I got 11 in reflex. Nice. I'm muted? No, no, no. no. Oh. Uh, you have an 11 in reflex, you said? Yeah. Ingrid, what is your reflex? 10. 10. Oh. Understood. Mine's 5. Rough. Ooh. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, do you want to be going first in, no. <laughs> in combat? No. <laughs> uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Turn the mage into the tank. What? First turn, run away. <laughs> yes. Goodbye. I would like to take my action to disengage. Oh, okay. Let's see. Uh, you said you have an eight, an eleven in. Sorry, can I get you guys uh, the Nyoka and Ingrid's reflex once more? Eleven. Ten. Eleven. Okay. Cool. Um, the creature also rolled an eighteen. Uh, and is tied for reflex score with Nyoka, so let's have a, a roll off real quick. Just roll a single d10, tell me what you get. Nine. Nine. So it'll be the turn of events. We'll go Nyoka, this creature, Ingrid, and then Cersei. Is everyone good with that? Works Not for good. me. Excellent. So let us begin, Nyoka. It is your turn. What would you like to do? Fast attack. Fast attack. I get two of those, right? Double check. Your attack action, yes. All right. Two fast uh, attacks. I got my my silver uh, sword, viper sword, serpentine sword out. It's coated in uh, what's what's that oil, Ingrid? Va that, that... The vampire. Oil. It is just straight up vampire oil, baby. Vampire oil. Um. Nine plus reflex, right? Uh, twenty plus. Uh, it'll be uh, with your. So you're making a fast attack reflex. Continue, apologies. Yeah, yeah. It's plus swordsmanship, so twenty-seven to hit on the first attack. Twenty-seven to hit. So this creature is going to take oh. Attempt. Can can I make it a can I make it a called action? You absolutely can. Uh, so, on, under normal circumstances, after the after the hit, we would determine a hit location. But if you're going to call the shot, where would you like to try to hit it? And that'll determine uh, whatever penalty you're going to deal with. See, uh, left. What they have here, left uh, limb. I'm going for the leg, left leg. <clears throat> so a minus three penalty. So that brings it down to what? 24. Seven, six, five, four, 24. Yeah, 24 is a hit. Excellent. So this creature is going to attempt to make a dodge. Let's see. As a 29. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Oh. Fast Vampire, vamp vampires, be, vampires be scary. Okay. So your first... Your first uh, your first uh, attack misses. You have two of these with your fast attacks. I'll attack again. Uh, what was that? That's a nine. Nine. So 27. Yeah, same as last time. Uh, I won't do a called shot. Understood. Uh, 
Understood. For reference, yes. uh, what page of the book is combat detailed on? So in the core book, it is detailed... 151. Thank you. Starting at 151. Yes. And then there's the uh, uh, the Witcher Easy Mode PDF uh, that is also available that kind of does like a more streamlined... This is the steps of combat as well. Um, hmm. Yeah. Uh, Edge... Or rather, Nyoka, your attack, your second attack does hit. So let's determine some damage. Uh, I roll for location, right? And then damage, or? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, D6, right? Is it a D6 or a D? Should... I roll a D10. D10. Okay. A 10. That'll be your lower body. Uh, you have a, uh, one half multiplier times one half multiplier. That's very strange. I don't like it. It's math. <laughs> it is math. Okay. Um, well, you don't want to do some calculus with your TTRPG? Rough. Let's see here. Let me break out my trig textbook. <laughs> Serpentine silver sword does. I never got that far. I failed math and then had to do algebra for the rest of my, all, all the way to senior year. Vibes. Understandable. Two, and then it does three d six silver. Three d six. You want me to break down the damage and separate damage, like? Uh, let's see. Let me see. I the only thing. The only thing I really need to know is the vampire oil. What does that give you? Is there anything in particular? Does that? I give a separate damage value, or does that just increase, like a multiplier? Where is the vampire oil? No. Boom, boom. Plus five damage against vampires, so the additional plus five. Um, it doesn't look like I need anything broken down. Okay. All right. So. Okay. Plus. Oh no. I am back. I apologize. I'm back. That's 23 times <clears throat> 0. 0.5, right? 23 times 0. 0.5. 11. 0. 0.5 damage. Did I do that right? What was your damage total? And then we'll add the, mul the multiplier. Uh, 23 total. Twenty-three total, or is that extra damage? Yeah, the the, the, the multiplier will grant you extra damage, so half of what your half oh. of what your uh, your normal the damage is, was as well. I believe I want to say it's rounded up. So it's a total. It'll be a total of what thirty-five damage. Indeed, it will. So thirty-five damage. Nice. Not bad. All right. Sounds like a lot. It does sound like a lot. Uh, this creature. <laughs> Uh, so we're gonna, because this is our first combat, I'm going to quickly, well, not quickly, but also be very open about what's going on with the creature as well with you guys, because um, it may help you uh, with your guys' combat combat turns as well. So the damage has been uh, been uh, uh, calculated. We're all squared away. If the creature had armor, um, whatever the armor value would be subtracted from the damage value. However, this creature does not have armor, so it's going to take the full brunt of this and get Nerd. very pissed off. <laughs> you're t you, you, it has more vitality than the Nilf Guardian grunts that we had uh, <laughs> taken care of. A little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. I'm actually concerned about what, <laughs> what killed the other Gargane. <laughs> actually, <laughs> that is that is 100% valid. I have suspicions, but that's out of oh, character yeah. suspicions. Oh, <laughs> right. it's just... So with yeah, two the two attacks made, one of them misses. Um, Nyoka, if you would like to, if you would like to take narrative control, this is also something uh, for for the uh, for for Azure and for Luna. Um, if you guys want to take narrative control of like how your guys' attacks hit and such, you want to give some flavor to it. It's entirely up to you. Um, this is something I like to do. If not, I will describe uh, to the best of my ability. 
No, uh, but do you have anything in particular you want to uh, describe? Yeah, I guess because uh, what we left off with Ingrid kind of doing a battle cry, right? To, Indeed, and it began uh, to lunge at Ingrid. Yeah, so as it yeah began to lunge at Ingrid, uh, I came swiping down at its leg, of course missing, and then coming up with a backward upward slash, uh, you know, catching it in its what what is a tail back area and cutting its butt. It's yeah. butt. Excellent. <laughs> you carve into the creature, a spray of blood uh, occurs on the ground in front of you. It rears its head back and then now looks at you, Nyoka. Uh, is that your turn? Is there anything else you are able to do on your turn? You are. Uh, you can take an extra action if you so choose by expending some stamina. You may also hmm. move freely. Is that is opportunity to attack a thing in this? I'd imagine it is. Uh, I don't believe so, actually. Okay. Uh, I think I'll, yeah, just stay where I am and, uh, yeah, prepare. Understood. No extra action for you then? No, not currently. I'm Understood. See what Ingrid got. Understood. It is now the creature's turn. <clears throat> uh, and you have caught its attention, Yoka. So, therefore, mm. we are going to make some attacks. So, the... Uh... Oh, and also, as the sword has 30% poison applied to it. 30% poison. So, yeah. Particular effects? Any, any particular effects? Uh... So... Let me see. Where is that is from? It? Is that from the oil or something else? Uh from from my sword as a school of the viper. Their their particular sword has that effect. Nice. Oh, lovely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see here, poison. Poison or venom courses through their body, doing three points of damage every turn, which armor does not negate. To shake off the poison, they must make a DC 15 endurance check, which takes one action. Oh my god. That's really nice. Actually, Dang. I love that. Um, <clears throat> noted. I will. Uh, I may ask you to remind me that on your turn as well, so I can deduct some stuff. Because um, okay. again, I have the memory of a goldfish. However, that's very good to know. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, so... This Garcane is going to make a few attacks against you, Nyoka. Uh, well, maybe not just against you. We have a bite attack that I'm going to take care of right now. That is going to be a 25 to hit. You may choose to take a dodge action, a block action, anything you would like for a defensive action. Let me... Let me freshen up real quick on... Because what? They're, I guess dodge would probably be the best bet. Dodging is, yeah, moving yourself out of the way, making yourself, um, uh, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a dodge. Blocking yeah. would be using a weapon shield or a body part to take the damage. Um, and then repositioning would be rolling or leaping out of the way of an attack. If successful, um, not only avoiding the attack, but you move a number of meters away. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I will dodge. <clears throat> Understood. Or uh, reflex. Plus 11, so at 15, plus 6 is, yeah, 21. 21 against a 25. This is going to unfortunately still hit you. Um, there is no uh, no called shot or anything like that for this individual, for this uh, particular attack. So we're going to deal with some damage. Don't do too much. <laughs> that's gonna be 14 points of damage to you Nyoka. what is your armor value uh, oh i'm sorry i should actually roll to see as well what portion of the body it hits unless it's my hand that'll be lower body uh so uh 
your your lower body, your portion of armor. Eight. Eight. So you're going to subtract. We're going to subtract eight from 14. You're going to take six points of damage. And okay, eight. which... Uh, which just, part of my lower body, or is it all of it? Uh, you know, that's an excellent question. Let's see if the actual core book actually has... It has, like, left limb, right limb, and then tail or wing. Yeah, I got the lower body portion. Let's see. Oh, there's human damage. Right leg, left leg. Ah, okay. Okay, so it was a ten. It'll be your left leg. Apologies, I rolled the uh, the monster hit location. I um I love that in the core rule book there is literally a section called human shields, and the first sentence is we all knew it would come to this. Rough. <laughs> yeah. So that's gonna be uh, six points of damage to you to your left leg, Nyoka. Cool. And your armor value on your left leg is going to lower by one. Oh, by one? Mm-hmm, because it has been damaged. Okay. Okay. That's where the uh, that's where the blocks come into play as well. If you if your left leg is completely shot for armor, and you want to throw your right leg or your right arm in front of it because it has full armor value, even mm-hmm. better. Uh, storyteller, remind me um, where the. Uh... Armor, uh, like, what do we have to roll? Uh, or what? What? What is our uh, crap? What is the na- thing? I'm, the word I'm looking for? How we know they hit the uh, AC? Where do we find that on here? So, uh, so you would normally do a uh, uh, a dodge uh, if you if you're gonna do a a a, a defensive action. Um, your your armor value is basically determining how much damage it can soak. Um, oh oh okay yeah if you've ever done like old school vampire like second edition or revised edition it's kind of like so i have not (laughs) okay i'm old holy shit um i'm i'm not that old we're fine fine. i've only played the fifth edition of vampire for ttrpg i mean i I guess technically whatever the edition that blood the bloodlines game is based off of could can be considered too but (laughs) okay yeah i'm not that old we're fine it's fine this is fine um cool um (laughs) work yeah it's just it's soaking damage um as far as like if they if to determine if the creature is hit or if you've hit it's based off of whatever defensive action they've taken normally it's okay. a dodge i predict myself favoring the dodge because why would i want to take damage at all um that's just Period. me personally um, i mean that's dark souls 101 right there so basically. uh thank you Seranus. um so uh let's see that is its first attack uh, its second attack, it's going to turn, uh, so it, it takes a, a bite at you, Nyoka, you move out of the way, it takes a chunk of armor off of your leg, uh, turning and screeching at you as it turns its attention back toward Ingrid, it thinks it may have, um, dissuaded you from further attacks at this point, so it's going to turn toward Ingrid, and then Ingrid, it's going to take an attack action against you. Okay. So uh, that is a lot, actually. I'm so sorry. Uh, um, that is a 20... Math is hard. 27. Uh, you can make a defensive action of a block, a dodge, or a reposition. It is your choice. I can run through those if you would like. Uh, I would like to attempt to dodge. <clears throat> By all means, uh, go ahead and roll... Uh, a d10 with your dodge slash escape skill. Where is dodge slash escape on here? Should be under your dexterity. Cool. No? That's weird. Where is it? Let me see. The dodge it should be on the reflex. Mm, reflex. reflex. Copy. Is... Sorry. Yep, there it is. Okay, cool. That is nine plus twenty two. <laughs> Understood. Uh, so your dodge fails. You try to attempt to move out of the way. Um, it's going to deal some damage. Well, first of all, it's going to determine hit location. That is a that is another left leg. Interesting. Uh, so it's sweeping the leg. It is. It's taking it's taking <laughs> a claw slash at your leg. 
nine. That is a thir- that is thirteen points of damage. What is your armor value for your left leg? Uh, eight. Eight. So you'll be we'll be subtracting um eight from that. So th- eight from thirteen, and it leaves over five. Four. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, you're right. You're yeah, right. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, five points of damage to your to your leg to you as a person, uh, Ingrid. Um, and your armor value for your leg is going to lower by one. So it is now sitting at seven. Uh, and that is. Let's see. We didn't really determine. It's going to hold off on making its last attack. And it is going to take its move action. It's going to do what now? <laughs> it's going to move um, as it takes yes. its, as it takes its uh, its claw slash at you, Ingrid. It is going to move using its ability using an ability called let's called tremendous leap. Uh, by oh. taking its move action, oh, a Garcane can leap 10 meters from a standing start. This leap can be made horizontal, horizontally or vertically. Uh, it is going to move... We didn't really determine... Uh, I, re- I should really... I should have set that up. I stressed too much about... This is in feet. Oh, no. All right. Well, we're going to say 10 meters puts it about here. That's not too terrible. That should be fine. I think... I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> I don't know Wait. spaces... It could be I, farther away from me. It looks like it's going for our, our mage. <laughs> well, we're going to put it over here. Is that okay with everybody? Because we haven't really determined what 10 meters is on this. I will I will do so. Yeah. Uh, I will do so likely behind the scenes during our intermission. Uh, I will say, <laughs> if, that's, if that's 10 meters. Yeah. All right. 10 meters is 32 feet. Oh Jesus! Holy shit! Oh, okay, so oh. we're gonna let me let me put it back where it was, and we can trace if, thir- if it's thirty-two feet. We can actually there's a there's a there's a baseline. Holy shit! Thank okay. you, Google conversions. Hey, that's not that bad actually. <laughs> we'll we'll put him right there. Oh, what a lad! What a lad! <laughs> Why are you running? <laughs> Why are you running? Why are you, Why are you running? running? Um, it's gonna leap over here, uh, and screech out in a rage um that is its turn at this moment i lied i lied we're gonna use one more ability no. double- actually you know what i'm gonna call that because i don't know if it can use one more ability but i'm gonna double check that while you guys take your turn so ingrid you're up okay let me see what my movement speed is really quick <laughs> Because I am going to obviously give chase. <clears throat> and that is my speed, right? Correct. My speed is four. So that's four meters that I can move? Yeah. Oh, what's the what's okay. the run? Uh the run so the run is because the uh, the movement is your normal movement. The run is uh I believe it's if you are making an effort to like, if you're, it's like a, it's like a dash almost thing comparing to D and D. Uh, let me pull up the exact description. So this is our run. Hello. Rough, rough, rough. Remember with our trial against the the spies, you know, Mm -hmm. how well that went? You mean one hit killing them? Yeah. (laughs) Yes. So your run is your move times, uh, move times, or your speed times three. Uh, this is verbatim from the book. It says, this is how fast you are when moving at a comfortable run. In one turn, you can move a number of meters equal to your run. So in this, uh, what is your speed? It's four, you said? Or so it looks like that's about um because I have a um meters to feet thing currently up. So that says that's thirteen point one two three four um feet. Uh yes, so okay, so your your uh, your speed is four. 
uh, your run would be uh, time, that times three, so that'd be 18, 18 meters. What is that in feet? I'm so sorry, guys. Four times, it, it, it said it's times three? Yeah, so, no, it'd be, it would be... Uh, 12. 12, tw- what, 12 meters, what is that in feet? 12 meters is 39 feet. Excellent. You'll be able to catch up to this dude very easily. Cool. I have a fun thing I want to try. Um, <clears throat> so, yes, Ingrid. Uh, and that doesn't take up an action or anything? Not at all. run? Oh, beautiful. I like this. Um, <laughs> I am going to have Ingrid uh, run um, right up to it. Excellent. And then, okay, how will this work? This is my first time doing this. I'm excited. I'm gonna cast. I want to cast Igni on it. Cast Igni on it. It's vampires and fire, right? Excellent. I like it. Uh, where's my? So Igni would be in magic and spells. Uh. It, that is a two, range of a two meter cone in front of me. Immediate, uh, it can defend by either dodging or blocking it. Uh, throws out a wave of sparks and fire, which does one d six damage per stamina point spent, and has a fifty percent chance of lighting anything it hits on fire. Fifty percent, dang. Excellent. Igni, Igni always deals damage to the torso unless used at point blank range, uh, and I am using it at point blank range. Um, when used at point blank range, Igni can be aimed at body locations. I want to, I want to aim for its head. Excellent. Uh, so this, I believe, is going to be a called shot with a magical attack. Um, uh, this is a. Uh, you're rolling a d10 plus your, uh, what is it, spellcasting, correct? Yeah, yeah will and spellcasting. So. Will and spellcasting. Okay, cool, 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 yeah. cool. Excellent. So d10. Nice. If you're taking okay. a called shot, uh, you want it at its head? Huh? You want it at its head? Yes. Okay, so uh, fair warning, this will be a major penalty. You'll be uh, making this at a minus five uh, if you're going to aim at its head. Are you cool mm. with that? You know what? I would rather guarantee. I would rather have more of a guarantee about hitting it. So I am okay with the torso. Excellent. Understood. <clears throat> no called shot. Igni always hits torso unless it's right up on its thing. Then you can aim. But we're gonna call it torso. No easy. No problem. It's gonna take a dodge action. That was uh, natural eight plus will eight nine. And spell casting, which is that is a twenty. That is a twenty. Let's have some damage. Okay. Uh, let me go back to the spell. Sorry, this is my first time doing it. Not a problem. Oh, per st- per stamina point spent. How does that work? So you may spend as many stamina points as you would like. Uh, and that you said that that that's the that's what equals the damage. Yeah, it's and and it says I have forty five sta. Yes, which that, those are your stamina points. Um, so, uh, if it's determining damage, you've already determined to hit. How many stamina points do you want to dump into this? I would uh, what, say what st- other hmm? yeah stamina points are used to dodge. So your first dodge is free. Your second dodge is going to cost you a single stamina point. If you would like to make an extra action on your turn, so for example, like Edge did two fast attacks, um, those were free. But if he chose to uh, make a third attack, he would have to spend three stamina points to make a, a, another attack. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to spend six stamina then, Excellent. and I'm going to do six d6 damage shit. on it. <laughs> okay, let's get some damage. Let's get some. Let's get some ASMR on this dice roll really quick. <laughs> that is six plus six plus six plus four plus two plus one. Uh, let me get my calculator out because <laughs> I am not good at that much math. You lost me after I think the fourth number. I was like, well, six plus six plus six. 
plus four plus two plus one. That is 25 points of damage. 25 points of damage. And it has a 50% chance of catching on fire, which I'm not sure how that goes about. Well, let's just have a roll of d10. Um, and if it'll 1 through 5, it's, we'll say it doesn't. And then 6 through 10, it will say it does. That is a 3, so... <laughs> okay. It does not catch on fire. However, um, Cersei, Nyoka, you guys see mm. this creature... Um, uh, uh, take a swipe at, at Nyoka, taking a swipe at Ingrid, and then leap uh, across the across the hall, uh, gripping onto the cavern wall, beginning to make its way up the uh, the stone uh, uh, incline. Ingrid rushing up behind it, and then casting Igni, in, uh, cloaking it in flame, burning its skin. You smell, it smells terrible. Uh, it smells like burning blood and flesh and whatever other goo this creature has inside of it. Uh, Ingrid, do you have anything else? Uh, is there anything else that I can do? You may expend uh, three stamina points for another action, if you so choose. The action will be made with a minor, with a moderate penalty, if it requires a skill check. Say that one more time. Sorry. So, uh, if you so choose, uh, you may take an extra action uh, by spending three stamina points. Uh, mm hmm if the if the action is uh, requires any sort of skill check, it's going to be made at a minus three penalty. Gotcha. Okay, I will expend three um, to do a uh, sword strike on it. So basically, narratively, this is how it's going to go. So Ingrid would have dashed after it, and uh, as she drew near, would have. Um, reversed hilt uh reversed grabbed her sword and then held held her fingers out done any of this uh symbols needed for igni pushed it against its chest and then pull back and then go in for a sword swing <clears throat> and that's going to be i'm going to do that as a uh strong attack excellent okay let me see. This will be because it is a strong attack. It will be made with another another penalty. Um, minus three, right? Yeah. So all all in total, you're at minus six. But if this attack hits, it will do double damage. <laughs> Let's see if that goes. Fine. Okay, and and that is um, D10 plus. Uh, let's see. That's swordsmanship, right? So that's D10 plus my reflex plus swordsmanship. Okay. That is a natural nine plus my dexterity, right? Dexterity? No, uh, yeah, ref no reflexes. So that's uh, plus 10, so that's 19 um, plus 6, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and that's minus, uh, minus 6, so 19. Excellent. Uh, expending a, a stamina point for the creature to make another dodge action. Uh, that is a 30. So, oh my god. Uh, you, uh, natural 9. Um, you, uh, uh, you swipe at it. It uh, rears back from the flame. It sort of winces and closes its eyes, gnarling its teeth. It's sort of flailing a bit. Uh, and because of this, it makes it a little bit more difficult to hit. It's it's squirmy. It's, it's, it's being uh, diff... It's not... It's certainly not staying stationary, and it is acting uh, sporadically due to some survival instinct. Uh, so this extra action, your extra attack misses, unfortunately. Um, oh, good. <clears throat> is there... I don't believe... I believe that is your turn. You got took movement action, extra action. I think that's, I think that's good. Which right. will bring us to Cersei. Ah, okay. So, after seeing all that I'm going to poke my little head out. Uh, well, I should probably get in line of sight. Or what is my move? That's a great question. Um, I can move at hello, where is it? Am I dumb? 
So sure. you're looking for your movement. It's yeah. your speed. It's your speed under the maximum uh, under like all the stats that we have in the top left. Mm. It is under uh, body. Uh, ah, yeah, you... ah, ah, yes, yeah, six. Okay. So got your, it. Uh, your move of six, uh, your speed of six. Uh, if you want to include it in a run, would be eighteen meters, which would be into what four feet. Google conversion. If you if you look to the right, also it, it auto calculates your run and leap. Mm. Nice. Okay. Well, all I want to do is just um nice. get in the line of sight. You got about sixty feet. Yeah. Of you so choose. Wow. Yeah. That's Fast wild. fuck. Um. So I was gonna come out from behind my cover, and I would like to cast a spell. By all means. Okay. Is there is there so, is there team damage in this? Yeah. Can I That's a great question. It depends <laughs> if there's a uh, if there's a like a scope of like it does it I believe it's the same thing as like if it says it's in a cone or if you're if it's at a specific target. Um I don't believe it would be too much of an issue. Um You can take no, it. it just, you know what? Yeah. I was about to say, yeah, I can I'm I'm a tank. I can take it. Hit me. <laughs> No, it just says you just hurl sharp stones at your opponent. So what I want to do is drop. What's the one on top? Stalagmite, stalactite. I wanted to drop one on top of it. That. I like it. Um, okay. I like it. Uh, so this okay. will be requiring a. Uh, uh, what is it? A ranged. We determined this last time we talked. So isn't it will plus spellcasting plus a d10? Correct. And then it's a dodger block from the opponent. Excellent. Uh, I'm gonna expend okay. another stamina and make him dodge. Yeah. Okay, that's decent. Sorry. What's up, Ash? What? No, I was saying I I see how <laughs> for multiple enemies how stamina will be important in this. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Yeah, <laughs> I'm being a little more liberal with my stamina points right now, just because um, <laughs> it's the one right now. And then... Can I dodge too? <laughs> or is that you're muted? Uh, you don't need to. This will be this will be uh, aimed strictly at this creature. Okay, cool. Okay, so I got a twenty-four. Twenty-four. Uh, this is gonna be. Actually, I think this is yeah. This is also twenty-four. Um. I don't know how ties work, but so in this case, we're gonna say ties go to attackers. Hey, because that just seems that. more fun. I was gonna say rock paper scissors it out. Well, okay. The only thing is, um, for this spell, you deal one d six. Okay, wait. For every point you roll above your opponent's defense, you deal one d six. Each roll counts as own attack. So, I guess that would only be one. Yeah, we'll call in it, that case. We'll call it one. Um, That's okay. It like scratched his arm. It was like a little off. Hey, it's okay. still doing damage. Don't be a one. Don't be a one. Don't be a. It's a two. Wow. I'm a really good man. You did it. A two. I believe in you. Okay. Um. And also, wait. So I subtract three stamina from my. From my stamina. Is that the cost of the spell? Mm hmm. Correct. Okay. Cool. Uh... Um. What was that? By all means, go ahead. Continue. No, I was just gonna... So, narratively, uh, Cersei will kind of scamper out from behind cover, see Ingrid struggling with the uh, creature, and look up and see the stalagmite or stalactite, whichever one is on the top, uh, watch her um, focus and just will it to fall down. It was a little off. It was like next to it, kind of, and not like on top of it, which sucks. And now she's going to scamper back behind cover right there. Excellent. Uh, Cersei, you may also take, uh, you also have an option of taking an extra action if you so choose. Uh, by expending three points of stamina, you may make another attack if you so choose. Mm. Yes. I will do that thing. I'm going to cast the same spell. Okay. So in total for this, um, you're going to be 
three for the three stamina minus three stamina for the uh for the uh the extra action uh minus three for the the spell as well uh as well this is going to be made it at minus three before because it is an extra action are you okay with that i am help so that would be three for the spell three for that so six and then it's just and then it'd be nine no no expenditure of, of stamina for that third bit. Just uh, made out a penalty of, of minus. Yeah. Minus oh, wouldn't it be another three because I caught the spell cast cost? No, no, no. Uh, so you're, okay. you're, in, in total, uh, in total, if you choose to take this extra action, you'll be decreasing your stamina by six. Uh, whatever okay. spell attack you're making is going to be at a minus three penalty, meaning you just yeah, uh, yeah, subtracting yeah. three from your roll. Apologies. Sure, I'll do plus. it. No, you're fine. I was just making sure that I got my maths right. Okay. I believe in you. You got this. Uh, okay. You should it. I'm gonna expend this um, point of stamina and make a dodge action. Okay. Um nine. Nineteen. Nineteen. Uh that is a so nineteen total or is that applying the minus three? Sixteen. Okay. Uh we tied again. Except for the minus three. So I, the creature successfully dodges out of the way. Okay. Um, the stalagmite, uh, the stalactite, uh, I should say, uh, you guys see Cersei uh, rings out, clutching her focus. The first strikes the creature in the arm. It sends out a screech of pain, anguish, and fury as uh, it rears back, ready to, uh, seemingly looks like it's ready to leap back at Ingrid, or past Ingrid over at Cersei. Cersei, you clutch again. You pull another stalactite down from the uh, from the top of the cavern, striking the creature. Uh, not not hitting the creature itself, but striking it as it looks like it was ready to make its leap, uh, deterring it from making its leap. Uh, so your attack misses, hey. and I believe that is your turn. Correct. Yep, I'm good. That brings us up to Nyoka. Uh, cool. Uh, that three poison you you doing it on your turn or or mine? Uh, either or, honestly, either way, it's gonna suck. Um, yeah, <laughs> you you can if you use your action to you can use your action to try to overcome it. So, um, but that that's my reminder for you. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Um, I will do, I will I will apply damage on my turn because I he will this creature will not be trying to resist that. How how tall are these? Is this lift like? Does the uh, the you're talking about the uh, the little overhang right there? Yeah, the about one five feet. In. Five feet. Oh, okay. So yeah. Excuse me, Cersei. Yes. Okay. What's up? Fifteen. No, you're just in my way a little bit. My bad. Uh, <laughs> I'm a, I'm gonna go ahead and and and, and yeah, jump up here excellent uh what is your jump i have five meters worth of jump so Hell that's yeah. uh 16 feet i could jump 16 about 16 feet up jesus holy Christ. cow okay. the power in the thighs right there uh and i got 88 feet of movement good god we'll round that up <laughs> for now to 90 until i get things appropriately into uh roll 20 so nyoka is the fastest of us. Onyx. <laughs> it makes sense. I'm a viper, baby. Oh yeah. Five. Two, Ooh, that's kind of good. We kind of got him sandwiched there. I like that. Fifty. So that's total fifty feet of movement. Um, I did read, uh, like there's like this ganging up feature. Ooh. Uh, so I don't know if you, if you uh. Tsh- let me see if I could find it one more time. But it was like basically for every person that's in uh within like a two meter vicinity, it has a minus one to its defense or something like that. I like uh, it. Yeah, I'm reading it now. When a person is attacked by multiple assailants in melee range, adjacent or within two meters within a wreath with a reach weapon, it's like a minus one penalty defense for each assailant beyond the first. For example, if you were surrounded by four neckers, you would uh, take a minus three to your defense. So this will take a minus one to its defense. I will uh, oh. allocate that as appropriate. 
It's oh, amazing, yeah. and I'm just kind of like picturing this as like the ca- the Captain America Civil War fight where <laughs> it's it's uh it's Ooh, Cap like and yeah. it's Cap and uh um Bucky. Gosh, yeah. Bucky uh fighting Iron Man. Yeah, I like it. Oh, I'm gonna go ahead and expend a stamina to uh to just go ahead and roll a dodge action as I'm pretty sure I know what's about yeah. to happen here. Me. It's a uh, 27 to hit. Oh my God. 27 to hit. Oh, we might have some. Okay. Okay. That is a 29 to dodge. Uh, oh my uh, God. This was thing a, is too fast. Was this a, uh, a fast strike or a strong uh, strike? Normally I should uh, ask uh, that uh, before, but we are still clearly, very clearly still learning combat. So by all means. Yeah, fast strike. strike. I'm going to go ahead and expend a uh, another stamina and make another dodge. Uh, let's see, 5, 16, 16 plus 7 is what, 23? 22. To hit? Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so, so damage, right? Yeah, give me some damage. Uh, damage is... So my gear... 46... Four plus five plus four plus two uh plus the two and then the five for the vampire oil right um so that's 22 so that's a total of 33 damage i forgot to roll for Jesus location fucking christ oh, hold on i for, hold on let me let me I, I didn't roll a location. By all means, give me go ahead and give me a location. Uh, it's a eight, so I think that's point five, right? Uh, I want to say yes. Yes, an eight it would be would be uh, halved. So what was your total damage? So yeah, um, thirty three total damage. Dear God. Okay, like I said, this creature doesn't have any armor, so this is gonna eat. Uh, how, total damage one more time. I'm so sorry. Thirty three. To its right leg. To its right leg. Or left limb, my bad. Excellent. Um, fuck it, it's Thursday. We'll steal it. How do you want to do this? Ooh! Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so you, you know, he, he says, excuse me, running past Cersei and does a front <laughs> flip over on top to the ledge, uh, flanking the Garcane, uh Again, striking at it, missing it again for the first time, uh, and then coming back uh, down with a second attack on its left arm, just chopping it off, if I can chop it off. Absolutely. Uh, Ingrid, Cersei, you are very very much privy to this. You see uh, Nyoka in a blur rush up, uh, flip over the ledge, and Cersei, you see him disappear behind the uh, the rock pillar. Uh, all Cersei you hear is a cry out of pain that is suddenly just drifts into silence. Ingrid, what you see is Nyoka make two strikes. One uh, that distracts the, the Garcane itself, and the other that finds Purchase slicing off its arm, causing blood to spew out. You see the blood and the where the, uh, the blade has met the creature has begun to sizzle, likely from the poison or whatever oils and mixtures have uh, Nyoka has coated their blades in. Uh, the Garcane is slain as it kind of slinks to the ground. It makes a feeble attempt at a leap that both of you are capable of, uh, ending very prematurely. And the creature eventually drops after blood loss. It trills a little bit, causing the, uh, two sort of sacks, those membranes on the top of its head to wiggle and wave a bit causes a slight distortion in your sight, just ever so slightly as it falls dead at the two of your feet. Storyteller, I have a very important question. By all means. Is Ingrid now once again covered in blood? <laughs> yeah, like, have the, have the arm just spray all over it. It just, it just happened to pivot, and the spray just... Well, I'm just thinking of momentum of the splash damage too. If narratively, if narratively, that's how you guys would like to play things. Absolutely, I would never. <laughs> I would never just, you know, 
spray monster fluids at people uh, unless it was necessary. Um, it feels like a consent thing. Um, so, Azure, if you <laughs> would like... for that. Uh, sure. Just for the comedic effect of her having had cleaned her armor just prior, and then... Uh, as it happens, she does watch the creature go down and looks down at her armor and says, well, why do I even bother trying? I love it. Uh, you guys have slain the creature. Uh, no other sound is in the cave. You guys are out of, in out of initiative and combat order. You are free to move and to speak as you wish. The scene is yours. Cersei, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you for the assist there, and very well done, Viper. Uh, you too. Uh, let's uh, regroup, just in case there's more. Yeah. I would like to note that Ingrid, when she says very well done, Viper, actually does look at Nyoka with a very... Uh, Almost like a surprised look, but almost like pleasantly surprised. Like she's really is impressed. Bit of pride. I like it. <clears throat> See. Ya. Well, if that one's dead, what killed the other one? Hmm. That's what I'm concerned about. We should continue to search these caves just to be safe. We never know what else might be lurking here, too. Well, um... Okay. I guess you could put that head with the other one. So we don't forget. <laughs> Ingrid will, in fact, go and grab the remains of this creature. Attempt to huck it over her shoulder and go and uh, and move it to where she left the head, which is right here. Be careful with it. I I'm good at keeping my kills safe. Yeah, or not damaging it further. <laughs> if you, uh, for our, well, for really for the, all three of you, uh, you are all three quite adept and uh, uh, familiar with. Uh, the harvesting of parts for these types of creatures. Uh, if you so wish, you may do so now, or if you would like to uh, risk moving it, possibly losing some of the blood and oh. might, you may uh, mm. hold off on that for now. It's entirely up to you. I wanted to harvest it like on the way out after we cleared, cleared the cave. Makes sense. That's fair. I mean, I guess we don't need to move it. It's pretty good where it is. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. And you guys can do that. Perfectly fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you want us to like actually walk through the entire game? No, I'm not gonna okay. I'm not gonna be uh, <laughs> pedantic so about big. this. Um what I am gonna ask is everyone to make uh either their own sort of investigations or like deduction or Yeah, deduction or uh uh, I can't believe to say occult. Uh, awareness, deduction, really, let me know what you're, uh, what you're looking for and what you're trying to determine, and I'll let you know what skill, what, what, uh, what to roll. Okay. Um, I would like to roll awareness to see if I can see, well, I can't really see much, but hear anything or notice more patterns like blood leading somewhere or... Something like that. I fully support it. Maybe you may roll awareness intelligence. What are the rest of you? Can can we like help with that role or do we need to make individual roles for that? You may absolutely help with that role. I would also like to help with that role if possible. Since I was gonna do the same thing. Excellent. So I got a seventeen. What do I add to that? Uh let's find out. So <clears throat> With a with some assistance, I wonder if it's under assist actually. Apologies. No You're worries. Fine. 
Ah, uh, okay. I think we ran into this problem last session. Uh, oh, whatever. To which I did not find an answer. However. Ah, there we are. Modifiers. Aha. Get wrecked. Uh, we're good. <laughs> Get wrecked random PDF that has no sentience. Um, we're going to add a plus two modifier to that. So what you got? Uh, so now we're at a 19. 19. Excellent. So with a 19, uh, you are looking for any patterns of blood and you, you're basically determining uh, what else has been in here, what else may have killed the creature. Mm. Okay. Um, I won't say simple enough because it is certainly not a simple task. However, um, through some careful investigation from the, the trio, uh, you see that combat took place here. You investigate the caverns and caves. Uh, there are claw marks all across the, uh, the stalagmites and stalactites. These creatures look like they have leaped and uh, grappled to the top to where they could not find safety. Looking at and sort of straining your eyes a bit in this darkness, you see that where they clung to the slash marks very quickly uh, uh, followed. So whatever creature, whatever killed this creature was capable of great feats of, of movement. It was able to drift or leap or f possibly fly to the top of the cavern and make its attacks. <clears throat> From what you can tell, this creature, these creatures were on the ropes. Uh, judging off of the blood splatter, Comparing it to the creature you have just slain. There was an injury to its uh, left pectoral. That looked like it had just recently sort of started to scab over and heal. And you follow the blood outside of the cave. It looks like this creature may have run from this encounter. Leaving its companion to face it alone. You investigate and you... Uh, Again, the three of you determine, because we're going back to the, the previous corpse, it was pinned by ver the very stone itself. So whatever creature has done this is quite strong. It's in this moment that one or all of you find, as it is pinned to the wall, something gripping into its hands, coated in slime, in blood and saliva, there is a clump of black feathers. Um, at that, I'll, assuming that it's not too tall up for me, I'll kind of like reach for it and try to get a closer look and just at least pull one out from its fist, I guess. You do this. They are <clears throat> matted, destroyed, really a remnant of what there likely was a beautiful feather. I assume we see this happening too. Indeed. What is interesting? What kind of creature uh, would that be? It is a clump of matted feathers in the fist of the creature that was dead before this combat started. Man, flat feathers. Feathers. Do you? Some of the dragonids have feathers on them, but. I mean, yeah, sure. Um, should we look in the may rest I, of the cave? What? Cersei, may I have a look at one of these feathers, please? By all means. Ingrid will. Take the feather, and I want to see if is there storyteller. Is there any way I could try to try to discern um, what this what what creature this might have come from? You absolutely may. Uh, let's have let's have wilderness survival. Wilderness survival. Okay, as intelligence. Intelligence and wilderness survival. Yeah. Seven, 
18. 18. That is a very common feather. That either came from a crow or a raven. Interesting. This is not... This does not appear to be from a monster of any sort that I can tell. More like a raven, a crow. Mm. Nothing very unique about it. She'll hand the feather back to Cersei if she wants it. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll take it. Uh, whew, that's very strange. <clears throat> um, should we look at the rest of the cave? Make sure that that was it? Probably yeah. a good idea. Do we need to do like a another roll? Uh, if if it's all the three of you uh, together, we can continue with the same roll. Um, and let well, if there is there a separate goal here? Are you determining trying to determine the same thing, or is there a separate is there a separate goal, or are you each trying to accomplish something different? Right. I know at least. Go ahead. I was just going to say, at least for Ingrid, knowing that there was that extra struggle and seeing the clues that we had already found, um, and especially, even though it was a common feather, I don't want to discount it. So I'm going to, you know, because you never know. Uh, so uh, Ingrid will want to see if there's any further clues that might connect to the feathers or... Um, or the or the fight that took place that they might have missed. Okay. Does the Yeah, Cersei's got the same idea. You okay? I just want to make sure there's no more hostile creatures in the cave. Okay. I don't um, really care about the the feathers after Ingrid said it seems to be some crow or raven type feather. So mm. So in this case, uh Cersei and Nyoka you uh determining uh similar Similar, having similar goals in your in your in your investigation, uh, one of you may make a roll, one of you may provide the assistance. Um, Nyoka, uh, I don't think you really need a roll to clear the area and make sure that things are that there's nothing else in the caves. Uh, Cersei, would you like for me to roll, or do you want to roll? Uh, well, my awareness is three. That's what I would roll. Uh, my, I, I was going to roll awareness as well as mine's at a four. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> Eight plus 19, 19 natural. Um, well, not natural, sorry. 19 total, sorry. Excellent. For my plus one from... Uh, the plus one, 20. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> you take a peek uh, determining what Again, more clues of what may have slain this creature. Uh, it's very interesting. There are claw marks. And then there are slightly smaller claw marks. that don't match with the Garcane's uh, hands themselves or their claws as well. In addition to this, you find bits of metal scattered amongst the dirt and the stone mm. small fragments look like they may be from a sword interesting um, if this is true then that means that there could that whoever whatever fought this creature could have been sentient if there was a blade involved mm -hmm. that's my thought um looking you said there was smaller you, you said there were uh, scratch marks that didn't match the creature that we fought? Correct. Smaller claw marks. Possibly from um, a smaller monster. I would like to investigate that further to see if I can discern what manner of creature could have made that. Understood. Uh, Cersei, would you like to assist, or are you... I'm... So, Nyoka determined that there's nothing left in the cave that would kill us mm -hmm. okay um would you say we've looked at this like hold on this hall down hello ping please this here ish uh let's see what you got for me 
Ping it one more time. Like this area. Oh yes, absolutely. Um, that is where the uh, the Garcane went to recover. That's where a lot of the pooling blood was. Ah. Um, uh, the the one you had fought. This is where it kind of made its little hovel to uh, mm-hmm. to recover and rest. Um, in here, you can find a number of bones. It looks like there are. This is likely where the missing livestock met their end. You can see some wool, some uh, torn up hide. It's a gory pit of carnage. What about over here? Basically opposite. Uh, this is a similar uh, similar site. Uh, this is likely where the second Garcane uh, made their nest so as to give the the other garcane a proper amount of space um okay. but it's not uh it's not pleasant by any means well in that case i feel like that's what i would have um spent my time doing understood it's like as soon as there was clear it was like we're all clear i went to go just look ingrid let's have a roll um trying to determine uh what those smaller claw marks could be correct uh, yes. <clears throat> so let's call it intelligence awareness or intelligence and monster lore. Your choice. I'm going to do awareness. Y'all yeah, okay with me getting a head start on this harvesting? Go ahead. Go go for it. Then I'll be doing that. 15. 15. Uh, 15. Uh, Nyoko, with your with harvesting, um, Let's call that. I could see sleight of hand. I could see. Um... Yeah, I could see sleight of hand. I could see wilderness survival. If you have an argument for something else, you may absolutely make it. I uh, use sleight of hand. <laughs> By all means. Uh, while you make that roll with a 15, Ingrid, um, with your awareness, smaller creature. Um, just as dangerous, if not more so. The claws uh, cut deeper and cut cleaner. They don't tear and rend. They slice through stone. They slice through flesh. Mm, as far as what creature could cause that, I'm afraid you're not entirely sure. You uh, course your mind falls to some of the uh, not superstitions, but some of the worst case scenarios. Other vampiric creatures. Possibly some that you've had a run-in with. Ingrid will take a breath. Steady herself. Uh, She does not want the look of panic that she feels in that little slight jog um of what it could be <clears throat> as she writes herself uh and okay <laughs> uh are either Cersei and uh Neoka are, you... are they in earshot I would be fairly near if it's near the dead one cuz I'm just harvesting so I'm making my way back from my once over and yes, they are within your shot. Especially with the amount of echo that is in the cave, you may absolutely uh, contact your companions very easily. I was about to say, we, we, uh, uh, since we know this cave is safe at this point, Ingrid will say, well, whatever made these marks um, was very powerful, very precise. It, I could, it could very well be a higher form of vampire. But very interesting that they would be fighting each other like this. Hmm. Well, I... huh? It's interesting. I mean, yep. I feel like most things don't want, you know, most sentient creatures don't want monsters like that pillaging livestock and villagers there unless they were also taking from their own hunting grounds 
could be further a further uh, creature, just not here right now. Nyoka, do you have any thoughts on this? I'm not too worried about it. It's whether it's a higher vampire or not. I killed one, didn't kill the other, so it's either dead or it fled. So, I- but I imagine if it's a higher vampire, they they tend to. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't have too many run-ins with them, but I imagine that they. They're more, they don't want to take residence in a cave. Ingrid kind of, as she's listening to Nyoka say this, will kind of disassociate for a second. And going back into a memory for that moment. And then snapping uh, right back uh, to reality and say, Yes, um, higher vampires tend to be nearly impossible to kill so i doubt whatever damage if if it was one that it may have received from these creatures that it caused any permanent damage they we would not be enough to fight or kill one of these things right so we shouldn't even worry about it right now out of our control out of our circle of control yeah well I haven't had the pleasure <laughs> to uh, to meet one, so pray that you never have, have to. Well, if I ever do, one of us would be dead. Let's have fair enough. Uh, Ingrid, with your uh, with your uh, uh, history and your um, your disassociation in this moment, would you say you are? Unable to make a human perception roll. One hundred percent, her human perception. I I did not make any alterations to stats because I forgot to. Um, so she still has a flat zero at human perception already. Uh, I'm just gonna roll with that. Okay. <laughs> um, so with- and especially with that memory, yeah, no, she is in no state mentally in that split second to discern anything. Okay, so let's have a human perception from both Cersei and Nyoka. If I can uh, forego it, because I, to be honest, I'm focused on cutting this thing up. Fair enough, Um, by all means. And I got a 31 on that roll as well. Excellent. I will let you know what you you acquire. Um, Let's have a roll from Cersei, right quick. 17. 17. In the grand scheme of things, would that be is that considered high? I'm not actually understanding what would be considered like a, a massive roll, considering we've been rolling thirties too at points. I like thirties, pretty high. Thirties, thirties, really high. Thirties, um, yeah. Thirties, yeah. thirties, pretty high. Uh, so for <laughs> for Nyoka, um, you are able to um, acquire three wing membranes of the uh, of the creature, uh, fresh and untainted. Uh, and three abomination lymphs for your for your uh... sorry one abomination lymph apologies for your uh, for your knowledge as well as um, garcane a vial of a, a couple vials of garcane saliva moist moist. Yep. Um, as well, uh, Cersei, um, you recognize, uh, Ingrid is just a bit distracted. Nothing, hmm, you're not a mind reader, at least not in this moment. Um, but, uh, you can recognize some, some pain there. I would... With a role like that, may I add something that she would see? By all means. Um, as Ingrid is diso- disassociating back into that memory, she's will subconsciously move her free hand to clutch at her side 
for a split second before snapping back and then the hand falls back down. As if touching an old uh, scar. Cersei will definitely notice that, but given um, given her thought thoughts right now, does not say anything. No, nope, not press further. But notice. Noted. Um. I have a question well, for the nice. storyteller. Do you think hydromancy would work on a big pool of blood if it was still wet? I. Uh, <laughs> what a fun <laughs> question. Um, it's, it's a you it uh, divine the last two days. It says a body of water, but okay. Um, what is this? Spell itself say does it specify body of water so it says hydromancy allows you to stare into a small body of water and glimpse an event that happened within the last two days or that is currently happening watching an event pass in the past uses this the base dc if you're trying to glimpse an event that's currently happening it's raised by one, one three um i could also use a bowl of water okay um, this is one of my, this is a, one of the fun questions I get as a game master or as a DM, whatever you want to call it, because it, well, the answer I give here is going to determine a lot of things for the future. Um, hey. I, uh, I would say yes, by all means. Oh, fun. So as I almost dropped my dice again, as Cersei is observing Ingrid, she gets a light bulb. Um, and she goes to where the wettest pool of blood is. The where it's just the most concentrated. Um, yeah. Okay. Where would that be? <laughs> um, likely where the spray happened. Uh, so where, ah! where, where, where Ingrid was once standing now is a pool of blood that has dripped both from the, uh, spewed from the Garkane's arm and also dripped from Ingrid's form. I'm also Great. cutting up this body too. So. Yeah. So you got a couple, <laughs> there's a couple pools to choose from. Yay. Um, <laughs> just professional Actually, I fuck, do Luca. have, yeah. <laughs> um, just doing little knife tricks. With the body. Um, now, I have another question. You can absolutely say no. But I remember last session when we were coming like around this corner. It was super concentrated and, and sloppy. Mm. Is it still that way? Still sloppy, yeah. Okay, I want to do this a little more privately. So I'm going to go over here. Okay, by all means. And I'm not you telling are... anybody what I'm doing. Since you are moving past us and Ingrid isn't doing anything, she will ask, uh, would you like some assistance with something? No, I'm okay. I've just Very well. had an idea. Okay. I <laughs> believe you. That, I say, I'm saying that out of character, by the way. I believe you uh, mm -hmm. 100%. I don't think you're suspicious at all because my human perception is zero right now. So what I'm going to have Ingrid do in the meantime is, with the knowledge that I have gleaned... I would like to move Ingrid back to the very human corpses that we found over here. I'll just move Ingrid where that is. By all means. And I would like to search for the same smaller, more precise claws. I want to see if the sentient vampire had anything to do with this. Hmm. Interesting indeed. Awareness, intelligence, uh, and then Cersei, if you'd kindly let me know what you're up to. <laughs> yes, so I'm doing a ritual roll, which I well, I should know what that does. Um, rituals, let me look at that real quick. 18, you... by the way. Oh, excellent. I well, imagine this is just going off. Well, you figure that out. Uh, Ingrid, um, 
the remains of the people here, the ones that are most intact, the ones Ing Yoga that, sneaking up. <laughs> Sorry, the ones that don't uh, appear to have been just savaged. They look like they were kept for later. By these creatures. The uh, Garcane took their legs. Severed tendons and arteries. But those smaller. Claw marks. There's piercing. There's. Pierce marks. Into their hearts. Mm -hmm. The ones that were more intact. Does this look more like a... From what I can tell, does this look more like a mercy killing? Or was this very intentional? It was quite intentional. It is also possible it was mercy killing. It's mm. hard to say. The emotions behind the action. But with that firmly in mind, we're going to take this moment to quickly take our break. Uh, it takes a quick moment for tech and bio, uh, double checking ritual rolls and all that good stuff. And, uh, we'll be back very shortly. We'll see you very soon. Welcome back. Uh, we reemerge once more in the cave, uh, with our companions. Nyoka, you have been hitching up monster parts to the horses, making sure that your, um, your items are taken care of. Uh, really just being... The, the professional about this um cersei you are dealing with some 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 honestly some ptsd um and also making your investigation and trying not to jump to the worst possible conclusion uh cersei you are uh, as chance as being sus um and performing <laughs> magic i mean met sus and mage magic kind of go hand in hand accurate 100% accurate. <laughs> okay, I'll um, this later. Uh, cool. while, while that's happening, obviously Ingrid is not going to be uh, noticing any of that because she is uh, taking notes. She is crouched over for the moment the, uh, the human corpses that she had just investigated, pulls out a small leather-bound uh, notebook and a writing utensil, and is um, making some quick notes. Noted and observed. You may absolutely make your notes. Perfect. For for recalling, um, for this purpose, um, mechanically speaking, we'll say that this is going to grant you a mod positive modifier for recalling this particular event and this particular hunt. Thank you very much, Storyteller. Not a problem. Nyoka, anything of note? Or are you continuing to uh, be the professional? You muted, my friend. Yeah. Uh, yeah, after everything is hit, she's just going to be waiting him by the horses, sitting down, cleaning his blade off, just waiting for them to stop playing with dead things. <laughs> Fair enough. Cersei, mm -hmm. what are you up to? I would like to perform a hydromancy ritual on this um, concentrated pool of blood. What particular ritual? Mm, a hydromancy, so yeah. I will read it. Uh, hydromancy allows you to stare into a small body of water, and now or blood, and glimpse an event that happened within the last two days or that is currently happening. Uh, I want to do the last two days, and watching an event is has a base of uh, the DC of fifteen. Then, by all means, let's have that roll. Okay, so I rolled a five, and then my ritual crafting is six, so eleven plus will is twenty-one. Twenty-one. What do you wish to witness in these past two days? What was attacking? the other two vampires 
that, that is battle. a cool spell. That is a really cool spell. Understood. Uh, you witness. <clears throat> you bear witness, Cersei. You watch uh, these two creatures, uh, their slumber disturbed. Everything is it a bit of shades of reds and grays, and as you witness, a woman walk confidently into the cave. She is dressed uh, quite finely in, perhaps it's due to the spell, or perhaps it's due to uh, her own sense of fashion. Grays looks almost like a, uh, uh, especially tailored, almost like a suit. Gray uh, pants, along with, uh, looks like they have, she has cast off her, uh, whatever, whatever overcoat or outer layer. Uh, she now wears a loose, almost uh, flowing, off-white shirt, paired with uh, what looks like an out-of-place vest. This is a very different style from this particular portion of the continent. She walks in with a rapier at her hip. Hair, shorter. Almost looks like it's been tied back uh, to keep from out of her eyes. Darker skin, fine features, sharp features. She's beautiful. But there's a rage behind her eyes as she looks at the carnage. You hear softly emanating from the pool of blood. Help. She turns her head. And sees these creatures that have been kept for later. She steps over and says nothing. She crouches down. And places her hand on a gentleman's face, the side of his head. And she covers his eyes as her finger elongates into a claw. She presses quickly, swiftly, closing her own eyes and withdraws, only to hear a, please, this, not like this. She turns to another and does the same. One of these creatures that she ends calls out too loudly and r rouses the Garcanes as they screech and circle she turns taking her rapier from off her hip she takes a fencing stance her left arm behind her back and she faces them as a woman you watch the combat ensue. They leap. She carves into them. She makes them suffer. You get the sense that she's playing with them. They leap to the ceiling. She, in a flurry of smoke and feathers, arrives at the top, cutting free their claws that sink into the stone, causing them to fall. It's only when one of them stabs into her left side, just below her ribs, that you see her face change and wrinkle, the teeth elongate, and she tears free the shirt and vest to expose the dark skin underneath, now stained by blood and opened by this wound. She forces it to close. As the Garcanes do combat, she loses herself. She eventually drops the blade. You see her fingers, her hands elongate into claws as she makes them suffer. She is silent while she does this. One of them flees. She allows it. The creature sh that remains shrieks out 
causing some pain. You can see her wince. She now grips it by the throat. You hear her voice for the first time in this vision. Sing for me, mon coeur. Sing loudly. And she digs her claws into this creature's throat. Almost playing it like an instrument, she adds a new hole every once in a while as it shrieks, causing it to change pitch and tone. And then she pins it to the wall and begins to refine her craft. Listening to its screams and its torture, she revels in the violence. This goes on for some time before she opens her eyes a bit wider as if realizing what she's doing and shrinks back into her mortal form. She goes to pick up her blade and she cuts the creature's throat. She looks around the caverns and caves. And she leaves. Without another word. This happened about a day and a half ago. The Garcane eventually, that she had let go, eventually returns. It feeds from the blood of its slain combat or of its slain comrade. It returns and hunts small bits of livestock, sheep, and young cows and calves. But it spends the next few days recovering. This is your vision of what you see. Okay, so cool. Narratively speaking, while um while Nyoko was getting all the all the viscera and Ingrid was investigating the the Ting's bodies. Oh no! My camera wondering why I wasn't coming back. Hi, I'm back. I'm here. <laughs> um <laughs> Love those sleeves, by the way. Thank you. Um while that was happening, she just went over to this pool of blood, not saying anything. No. Alarm, please. And got out uh, got out ritual components um, and laid them out in kind of a star pattern around and over the pool of blood. Um... And then I think fifth essence is like kind of wispy. That's mm -hmm. what it looks like. She would have taken the two vials of that and poured it in. Uh, and then just stared into it. Um, and that probably took, oh, I don't know. It takes five rounds. How long is a round? Oh, no, it takes five rounds to prep. Mm -hmm. How long is a round? What an excellent question. Thank you, R2. I think... Oh, that's what that is, yes. Um, where is Cersei when this is happening? Where my character model is. Oh, oh gotcha, gotcha. Okay, yeah. Um, I, I, probably more like back here. I definitely ain't seeing shit. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, around... Hello? We will determine at a later date. For the time being, okay. for the time being, um, we'll say it takes the amount of time. Uh, Nyoko will be have, having sat outside for about five minutes. Um, Ingrid, you may have made your investigation, so we'll say the timing lines up for the night for the time okay. being. So all the things will have. I imagine they'd just be saturated to the point of just being like unusable. And just she'll just leave him sunk in the pool of blood, and she'll just get up and walk, you know, over to where Ingrid was, and just start walking out of the cave. If you uh, 
do take a second to notice there is something that Ingrid is going to be doing. Uh, after finishing taking her notes, she will close the notebook, tuck it back into its place, and stand up straight, look down at the bodies with that stern face of hers, hold her hand out, and cast Igni. She's going to try to... Uh, she'll say, be at rest. Um, you know, trying to avoid potential wraiths and ghosts forming out of any of this. So she's trying to destroy what, after taking the notes that she needs for the clues, destroy the remains. <clears throat> Understood. We do this, the cremation is quick. It will just then turn and then start walking out of the cave as well. Well, I'll walk out of back up to the horses. You do this. Are we done? I believe so. Oh, wait. <laughs> Ingrid will then run back in. Grab the head. <laughs> That she had left at the side. Come back out. Hitch that to her horse. And then say. Now I'm ready. Perfect. Edge, did you have something? I saw you speak, but you were muted. Well, no, I was just going to say. you. The horde, the heads would have been attached to the horses. That's what I was doing. Oh, oh, you, already, oh you already got that head too. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. I was just. Okay, cool. Well, if that, if that works, that works. Fair enough. <laughs> The three of you journey back. Is there silence or is there conversation? I don't say anything. I don't think Ingrid says anything either. I think everything that they that she would have said in the moment, she's still thinking right now about the fact that there is possibly a higher vampire in the area. I'll say something. <laughs> Ooh. Well, y'all did pretty good back there. The bravado wasn't necessary, but you still came through. Bravado? The battle cry and stuff, you know. I was trying to grab its attention. You don't look like you can take too many hits. Well, goal was not to get hit. Fair enough. That's all she'll say on that. <laughs> Darcy looks like she's listening, but like taking on that dreamy looking up uh, kind of look like she's staring out, but thinking. Zoned out in the horse. <laughs> Zoned out. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Ingrid will turn then to, Cer uh, to Cersei and say, are you all right? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. You seemed miles off there. I'm always thinking about something. Very fair. Very fair. I got what I could off the bodies, so uh, I imagine uh, we'll divvy it up as once we get back. Works for yeah. me. Uh, what time is it? What time would it be by the time we get back to the city, rather? You guys uh, went out the same day after uncovering the Nilf Guardian plot and all that. Um, mm. This would be cresting into already evening. Uh, I was going to mention this earlier. However, I didn't want to influence you guys' decisions. You guys did plan to try to lure this thing out into the last bit of daylight to try to weaken it. Uh, but very clearly it wasn't fucking necessary. <laughs> so... Um, How about that? This is uh this is what's what what you guys are facing the last shred of daylight as the sun peaks over the mountains. I'm not gonna lie, I completely and utterly forgot that we had a plan to lure it out. Me <laughs> <good>. too. Bungo. <laughs> after um, after Nyoka did 35 points of damage the first round, I was like, they don't need to do that. They're, they'll be fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Unless you know we get ambushed by the higher vampire. <laughs> Very yeah, true. that. 
Mm -hmm. Anyway. Um, I guess Cersei would just be looking um, looking out from the distance, watching for birds. It's like she's, you know, daydreaming. I will say, because I just remembered, um, Ingrid will, as they're riding, give pretty good, get a bit, bit, bit of a pat, and then pull out her journal as they were, as they're riding, and she will start saying, "Do you remember the human corpses that we found at the mm -hmm. entrance of the cave? I found." Similar markings around their forms, including noticing their hearts had been pierced by something very precise. We may, in fact, have a, another potential target in the area. How it is. What do you mean? Well, whatever killed the humans that were there uh, seem to have been kept there for food, whether it's for the feral ones or for um, something more, who, who's to, whom's to stay. Um, but it is hard to tell um, why they were killed so suddenly, but the fact remains that they were human and they were killed by this creature, whatever it may be. So it may mm, be good for us to be wary. And looking at Nyoka, she would say to know that there is a potential further target, though this one may possibly be m more powerful than we could handle. That is what I found. Oh. And I'm, I'm just going to hand... Um, I'm going to pull the reins back a little bit on pretty good and try to uh, keep pace with uh, Cersei and hand her uh, the notebook so she can see the notes if she wishes. She'll just flip to them. Huh. You noted that it could be a mercy kill? It is possible, though it is also possible that they were killed for other reasons as well. Well, if we're going to think about clues, the other Garkhan was dead. Mercy. Very much so. And so maybe, I don't know, maybe it was a mercy kill after maybe someone was here before dealing with them before we got here. Almost taking a contract away from you, witchers, and she'll hand the um, journal back. Ingrid will take the journal and then nod to Cersei. That is, that is definitely a possibility, and then she'll look to Nyoka. What are your thoughts on that? My thoughts? I don't have any thoughts. There's too many speculations, too many things it could be. It could be a wild animal came in and fed on the dead. Could be that it was two solitary Garkins that encroach on each other's territory and they decide to fight. Yeah. Okay. Right. We don't know. Like I said, outside of our circle of control. Let's just take our bounty, get our money, and go back about our lives. I will say this. I'll stay in town for a while just to see if there's any more deaths. As will I. Stop. Then I guess we have our answer. There's more than just what we've killed. Hmm. Ingrid, <clears throat> I don't want to say this. Ingrid will put a journal away and look between the both of them, almost studying them for a moment. 
Um, am I no like okay? Now that we're actually verbally speaking, would I notice any uh, evasive speak coming from human, Cersei or even human perception? Nyoka? Human perception. Uh, I would say. Cersei, you may make a deception roll. Uh, yeah. Nyoka, you had something? I was going to ask if I could... <laughs> I'm sorry, but if I could uh, kind of add to uh, Cersei's role. Oh, uh, interesting. Um, just to throw it off a bit. Yes, I don't believe you... Um... Let's have... Yeah, let's add a let's add a modifier to it. So add a plus one? one Cersei, yeah. That's Feel ganged up on. <laughs> no gang, just sauce among us. Uh you said that was okay, that's empathy, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, fourteen. Fourteen. Damn. Fifteen. I had a fourteen <laughs> without the Ooh, close. Uh I would say um with that close of a roll, I would say, Ingrid, you probably still have your dis suspicions, uh, but don't is this? don't think they're hiding things that are important at the moment. I would think that you are more concerned with the possibility of a higher vampire being here. If you do, however, find that they know something and are maybe hiding something, You would be right in your rage, I think. Indeed. Oh, <laughs> out of character. All right, keep your secrets. <laughs> um, Ingrid will just start keeping pace again, fully, uh, and continue to be quiet. If there is nothing else, the three of you continue having your... Uh conversations suspicions being formed i would like a roll from cersei against nyoka nyoka you may make whatever role you feel necessary but or you've aided you've aided cersei in covering up whatever they may be hiding uh let's see if cersei notices that shall we if you would like to be more slick and more uh uh keeping things close to your chest I can see deceptions if you want to be just completely open about it you don't need to roll it at all um, I will set a DC okay uh. can I use stealth stealth Miyoka's <laughs> uh... <laughs> best ability Maybe. let's go Maybe he like maybe he like bumped like the like made the horse make a noise or like bumped Ingrid's horse by accident. Okay, uh, we're <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> fully arguing against yourself here. Um, oh wait, why am I doing that? Um, uh, Noka describe to me how stealth is going to help you hide things from Cersei here. Hide hide the fact that you helped her here. Maybe you know I bumped my <laughs> horse face angry by accident. You know, uh, make you a know. stealth roll. I'm gonna put a minus two against you. Uh, <laughs> okay. Because uh, uh, primarily because you can hide your face, you can hide uh, any any uh, uh, tells. I do have my, my, my shawl on. I would have yeah, my shawl on that. if we're writing. Sure, but we'll, but... we'll make this at a minus two. Uh, Cersei, go ahead and uh, make human perception if you'd like. I got a 20. 20. Oh, shit. Do you still want me to use my... Do you want me to use the empathy stat or the deck stat for stealth? I'm going to call it empathy and stealth. This is going to get weird, yeah? I love it. It's... We're breaking rules here today. Episode two, we're already throwing the fucking rule back out the window. <laughs> Six. Um, and 13. So, yeah, I guess you minus the two is 11. So, so Cersei with a 20. Uh, 
you catch some knowing look as Nyoka glances over every once in a while. No idea why he would do that. But you think that he's he's on to you. He just helped you cover up a lie. For whatever purpose, who knows? Um laughter. Yeah, after that exchange happened, she uh will kind of go back to daydreaming and she'll try to look like past Neoga at like, I don't know, the scenery, but then just make a very quick eye contact. And then just kind of and then gaze forward. Understood. The three of you. Uh, mm-hmm. Ingrid is just padding pretty good, trying to go make her. You know, she, she's she, she's a good girl. Yeah, she's she, she she may have got a little startled there, and I don't. I want to make sure she's okay. You, uh, the three of you, make your way back into town. You find the Burgermeister. He pays you what is agreed. There is a question. Um, do you convey the information that you have, uh, the suspicions that you have, Ingrid, about a higher vampire possibly being in the town? Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. I want to make sure that he knows that he he knows everything that he needs to know to potentially be safe. I will even go so far as to let him look at the specific pages in my journal. Uh, I would I would try to intervene if I notice you headed that way. Ooh. Let's... More more privately. Okay. But yeah. Okay. So you begin to speak up, Ingrid, um, Nyoka, as this information is beginning to be conveyed. What do you say? Uh it'll just be more of a question if you think that would be a good idea. Perhaps we should wait a little while to see if there is more danger. Otherwise, he's just going to be on the alarm. Ingrid goes quiet for a second as she hears that, turns her head and furrows her brow at Nioka. Hmm. The choice is yours, but... No. Very well. I'd rather not have the Burgermeister on our asses the entire time we're here. Because he's scared. Fair enough. Humans do seem to uh, jump to conclusions and based on fear, so very well. Hmm. That's all she'll say on that, and she will, in fact, stop and not give out that information. Noted. You are paid what you are owed and more. Uh, Burgermeister Valeran, um, explains that he managed to find some more in the town treasury available to the three of you. You were each paid 300 crowns, uh, whereas the previous total would have been 700 crowns. It is now 900. And for the, for the other deed... Simply name what you wish, and he will attempt to make it so, as he had previously said. If it is on merely coin, that is to be determined. Um, if it's lands or a title, a place of business, a home, your choice. Knowledge, tomes, diagrams, artifacts. How interesting. I don't know if you... By all means, go on. I don't know if there's... I know recently, not recently, but I know a while back, uh, there was a witcher that died uh, in a nearby village. If there's any remnants of his things. That can be arranged. As well, Nyoka, if you wish for knowledge, there are certain locations in Vizima that are walled off from regular citizens. As I said, at the very beginning of all of this, Vizima is built atop an old city. An old elven city. 
these places you have uh, free access to. Ingrid, is there anything that you would wish to name in this moment as your price for the Nilfgaardian plot and your assistance with it? Ingrid will say... Nothing. She requires nothing for that. Noted. Your kindness won't be forgotten, though. And should you ever require anything from Velarad, we will surely assist with you. Cersei, is there anything that you wish to name in this moment? Velarad. It's been a long day. Can I get back to you on that? Of course. All right. Nods. No rush on this. The three of you, the night to yourselves, payment and favors owed. Yoka, Ingrid, where are you going to stay tonight? Where are you going to wash the blood off again, Ingrid? <laughs> um, I, uh, I ask Cersei, uh, since she's familiar with the town, where would be the best spot to stay at? The inn? Or if there's any other lodgings? I would probably have done the same, so... What's the best? Do we care about tolerance? She would ask. She would ask that in character. Best as in... Like, oh no, affordable. she would ask, uh, do we care about tolerance? No. Just price. Okay. Best rates. What about you, Ingrid? Preferences? No preferences at all. As long as I have a place to lay my head and to clean the blood off. Uh, and she will ask the little storyteller in her head, what's the best <laughs> inn? There is an inn uh, that sits uh, directly near the edge of the Lake of Izima. Uh, beautiful, uh, a beautiful view. Uh, rates are a bit high, depending on uh, how you barter. So you move inwards toward the city. Not such a nice view. You find another inn uh, that you can surely uh, suggest to them. Well, my favorite place to stay when I was setting up shop is by the lake. They're a little, they're a little pricey, but the view in the morning is worth it, and the food. Uh, and I know them; they're nice. But of course, there's one in town. That's a little less nice. That's cheaper. Yeah, I guess I'll go with that one. If there's any news of deaths, I guess the peasants would probably frequent that place more than the first one you suggested. So That is a fair point, and I'll give directions. That makes sense, and I believe I will do the same. I will join you, Nyoka, if you do not mind. Yeah, I can do with some company. How sweet. I'm going to go back home. <laughs> if, you, if you want to stop by whenever, as long as you're staying here, you're more than welcome. Special Witcher discounts. Don't tell your Witcher friends. Thank you. Cersei, and thank you for the help today as well on the hunt. Your Anytime. contributions were invaluable. Of course yeah. they were. No problem. Sorceress and vampire hunter. What can I say? I'm a woman of many hats. Indeed. She's not wearing a hat. <laughs> <laughs> Ingrid tilts her head like a confused puppy for a second. <laughs> I don't see a hat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no. I would say, and um, I'll do a small like, uh, courtesy bow, courtesy, and just leave unless there's anything else. Um, not for me. Yep, I'll go home. Neil, uh, go on. On the way to the to the inn, or if we're at the inn, um, you play Gwent. 
Been on. I'm not too fantastic at the game, but it is fun to pass the time. Uh, as long as you got a deck. Oh, I have a deck. Nielka and Ingrid uh, make their <laughs> way to the inn. Acquiring rooms and playing Gwent uh, well into the evening. Cersei, you retire to your home. You prepare yourself for the evening sleep. The three of you rest in your own spaces. <clears throat> Sleep takes all of you. Cersei. You are awoken. Only a few hours into your rest. By a whisper. You've made new friends, mon chéri. I hope that you're doing uh, well. And that is where we'll end tonight's session. Ah. Uh, oh my god. Ah. Uh, oh boy. <laughs> Thank okay. you guys for joining me. Um, this was, as always, amazing. Um, awesome. Sorry for the, the cliffhanger, but it's one of my favorite oh, I love the cliffhanger. episodes. Yeah, <laughs> I am here for I am I am here for all the cliffhangers. Uh, so uh, we've caught up right up against our time, but I don't want to cut anyone short by all means. Plugs and promotions and all the things. Um, uh, do the things. Hello, let's start uh, on my left. Uh, Luna. Hi. Okay. Um, Azure and I are streaming tomorrow. A collab, some game, probably Divinity Two. Yeah. Prop, yeah. Uh that's Jared by Night and the Azure Butterfly. Um Are We Dead Yet? Season two is gonna be uploaded probably next Thursday, at least episode one. Um on Huddy's YouTube channel. Um, this is on Huddy. Vampire the Masquerade, Are We Dead Yet? You could already mm -hmm. watch season one if you want. You should. It's real good. Um and yeah, that's all I got. Luna already said what I was going to say, too. So <laughs> I am. Um, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow with uh, with Luna for uh, some collab stuff. And after that, my next. My schedule is going to be up. <clears throat> I swear this time my schedule is going to be up on uh, Sunday. Uh, so, Yeah. <laughs> Ezra, what do you got for us? Uh, I don't have nothing for y'all. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm here, you know, on Thursdays playing The Witcher: Ways of Old. Uh, tomorrow I'll be here uh, on Fridays, you know, hopefully uh, hunting some some kindred scum. Uh, oh my! And uh, so not too dissimilar yeah. from what we're currently doing. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh and yeah i think that's all that's all i'm in at the moment so excellent excellent also peep those sweet ass fucking shout out notifications we put in the chat god dude that's so good i'm yeah. a man of my word I you, said did last it. Week, you did do it and totally yeah. not in the last minute yeah <laughs> praise me edge I'm, i mean i'm the one that typed it oh my so. god um of course <laughs> um I've been your game master for this, Gilbert Ramos. Uh, found everywhere at Ramos the Nomad. We, of course, have been the Rolling Nomads. Rather than spew out our schedule for the next 20 minutes, because uh, we are pretty stacked nowadays, um, I will direct you to our Twitch chat, our, our Twitch channel, uh, our schedule, which is now up to date for all of our stuff. We've got Witcher on Thursdays, um, Hunter uh, V5, or Hunter 5th Edition on Fridays, uh, and then Scion and Indy on, on Sundays. Uh, as well as some gaming stuff sprinkled in there for, for good measure. Um, you can keep up to date with us, of course, on uh, Twitter. Uh, we are at underscore Rolling Nomads on Twitter, where you can keep up to date with our, our schedule and such. Uh, any late starts, any cancellations, any new programming. 
uh, as well as Hive Social. My dog is losing her mind in the background. Hive Social at underscore or at Rolling Nomads uh, for the same same type of setup. These episodes will go up Monday. I was late uploading this one, uh, rather the first episode, um, Monsters Among Us. Gonna lose my mind. Uh, Monsters Among Us is now up, which is episode one of our our Witcher game. Uh, over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Rolling Nomads. Uh, and, uh, that's, I believe that's all I got. We're doing, we're doing Are We Dead Yet things. Uh, I, I don't, Luna's got more details than I do, or maybe I just I forgotten. guessed, man. I, <laughs> I was going off of our last schedule. Absolutely. I could awesome. be a liar. We'll find out. Um, I'm going to take, I'm going to take notes just so I know. I love it. Thanks. Uh, we'll see you guys next Thursday. Same time, same place, same heroes and what's the channel yeah bye